Hey there, welcome to the channel or welcome back if you've been here before and you're one of my 13 subscribers. <laughs> Special shout out to my buddy Adrian for setting this conversation up that I had with Ryan Searhant on FaceTime. Adrian is a close personal friend and he is the creative director for Ryan Searhant. He's the one that films and edits his vlog, which I'll put up here. In this conversation, we discuss a bunch of different topics. To name a few, we talk about personal branding, we talk about self-confidence, uh, getting out of the comfort zone, we discuss what kind of advice he'd give himself at a, at a younger age, and then we talk about work-life balance. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and hop right into the conversation. Well, we kind of had some questions about like branding, personal branding. Um, sure. We see that you talk a lot about it on your blog, and um, yeah. we kind of wanted to know how important is it to build a personal brand, and do you think everybody should do it for any line of work? Yeah, uh, good question. No one buys real estate for me, right? I'm a real estate broker. Everyone buys into my brand, and through that, then comes real estate, right? They could buy real estate through anybody. People could buy real estate online now. People could buy it through one of the 80,000 real estate agents that are in New York City. They can just walk into open houses. They don't need anybody anymore, but they buy into my personal brand, and they want to work with me to go and buy something else that's already readily available. Like, you can buy shoes online, but if you know your friend had a really good experience with a great shoe salesman at Macy's or some other store, you might say to yourself, actually, should I run the risk of buying my own shoes online and maybe the size isn't wrong, maybe the fit sucks, maybe I don't know something about it, or should I actually spend the time, go see that shoe salesperson and actually get something I know is going to be awesome. And that's the personal brand that that shoe salesperson set up for delivering excellent customer service. And that's what I do for real estate, and that's what I think any successful salesperson and business person really does, right? Yeah. yeah. Especially today, especially when everything's available on Amazon. Like you can talk to Alexa and that thing shows up. Can't really do that for buying a home. Um, but you know, yeah, no one buys the product. They buy the person and through the person comes the product. That, make, that makes sense. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> can I ask you a question about um, self-confidence? Um, sure. It, it kind of seems like, I mean, everything that I watch, you just seem like a very confident, confident person. I wanted to notice if you deal with any like self-doubt or how you break yourself out of the confidence or break yourself out of that comfort zone. Um, uh, yeah, man, I, I have self-doubt every single day. I, um, I, you know, I think my, my biggest driver is probably fear of failure. Right. And it's one that like, you kind of have like imposter syndrome a little bit where like, why are people buying things through me? Like, do people even believe I should be here? If I sold that, did I really sell it? Like, should I have sold it? Um, so I have a lot of self-doubt, like, all the time. Um, probably because I was a pretty insecure, self-conscious little kid, and that kind of carried it through. Like, I wasn't a popular kid. I wasn't good at sports. I, if you've read the book, like, you know, I had a lot of, like, body image issues, both with, you know, weight and terrible skin. And it's like got picked on, bullied, and all that shit, which like people go into all the time. So I'm not gonna like belabor it, but it definitely affected the way that I thought about myself growing up, both through high school and then in college. And then I got to New York City, and I realized I could start over. And I realized that every single day I could kind of become whoever I wanted to be, which was what was kind of cool about real estate. Like every client that I meet, especially as a salesperson, like they don't they don't know me. I don't have to see them in class tomorrow, <laughs> right? Like I can I can be the best person I want to be for them starting right now. And that idea really helped switch for me like how self-confident I could be because I'm basically reinventing myself every day. And I don't mean fake it, you know, I don't mean like, you know, uh, be somebody that you're not. I just mean that like, if you are self-conscious or insecure or have feelings of self-doubt either day in, day out or, you know, every once in a while, it's okay to feel that and tomorrow is a brand new day to be the best version of yourself you want to be because you're going to meet a new person. Like that's what's so cool about everything that you do, right? Either being entrepreneurs or being salespeople, like you're going to meet somebody new and they don't know that you did that stupid thing two years ago, right? Or they don't know like what you're feeling about yourself. They just want to see that you're confident and that you're confident in yourself and they're confident in what you're doing because that's what they're going to find. It's awesome. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. But that fear of failure gets me. I mean, that's like, 
that's my biggest driver. And the fear of wasted potential. You know, like they're like life is short. You know? Like it's it's super short. I don't know if you've ever known anybody who died, but like I, the minute you know somebody who's young who's died is the minute you realize like holy shit like life is just super short and you've got to be confident otherwise like why should anyone else have confidence in you you know and it's not about being overconfident because then you're an asshole it's about finding that fine line of where you're like you're confident enough where you know you're the best person to work with and if somebody chooses not to work with you then kind of shame on them like I'm fortunate for them no problem you know and anyone who doesn't hire me I always send them an orchid. Like, Why is that? Why an orchid? Great flower to send to somebody. <laughs> it's a great simple flower that's great for kitchens and bathrooms and stuff like that. We use it a lot for staging apartments. Okay. You know, it's like thirty bucks or forty bucks. And so, anytime someone doesn't hire me, I'll, I'll send them an orchid and say, "Thanks so much for the opportunity. You know, looking forward to seeing you again." And I swear to God, like those people always come back to me because the people that they hire don't get them a gift. Wow, that's a cool little tip. That's awesome. Um, Hey, um, I was wondering, is there any advice that you would give your younger self? Any advice that I would give my younger self? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you, um, it's interesting. If you look in the book, you got the book behind you? <laughs> yeah. If you look, um, oh, where is it? Uh, one second. So I wrote this book as a playbook for my entire team. Yeah, if you look on page 214, right? There's like the old man version of me. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Awesome. So I see you got the book back there. Now you guys see have to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to the audio. <laughs> Listen, it's, um, you know, there's an old man version of me in there because that's the person that I work for every single day. And I talk about that in like keynotes and speeches I, I go into a lot. But, you know, my the advice that he gives me is to keep working and to work harder every day than I did the day before and to keep taking risks, right? Calculated risk, like smart risk, and to keep pushing myself because I eventually, before I know it, I'm going to be that guy who's 80 years old, like in that book. Right, like before we know, like it, literally yesterday, I was 24, getting my real estate license, and had no idea what I was doing. It's like amazing how time flies. Um, but if I went back in time 10 years ago to my younger self, I'd probably be very, very calm, and I'd just tell him everything is going to be okay. Tomorrow is a brand new day. Like that's. I, I wouldn't say anything too complicated because I think knowing myself and knowing how stressed and anxious I can get, I'd probably read into it too much. And I'd probably be really fucking freaked out that future <laughs> me just like showed up from the future and that would probably like throw me for a loop. Um, but I tell them everything's going to be okay. And knowing that would be enough to get me out of bed bright and early every day to go and crush it every single morning because everything is always going to be okay. It's always going to work out. That's great. Thank you. Um, your vlog, by the way, is awesome. Um, I love it. And uh, yeah, it's great uh, Great editing there, dude. <laughs> good editing. Great. But so, how's the focus? How's, all, how's the focus? Oh, the focus is always out of focus, but that's okay. The song made up for it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Out of focus. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding. Uh, so, I mean, you have a vlog, you have a book, you have all this stuff. My question to you is, oh, and on top of that, your Audible has like 1,500 like five-star reviews. So you have an audience that's telling you they love audio. Um, yeah. How come you don't have a podcast? <laughs> I'm about to. Yeah, that's a, it's funny. Um, it's funny how many people listen to the audio book. Um, I didn't know that it had that many reviews. It's crazy. Um, uh, the... Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working on one actually right now. I'm working on it. I, I didn't want to do it. Honestly, man, I'm so busy. I didn't want to do a podcast like just from my office. I didn't want to bootleg it. I didn't want to just rip audio from the vlogs and put it out there. It had some bullshit podcast. Like I wanted to do something real that um, that felt real. That felt like I actually put a lot of thought into it and worked on it. So we've been working on the podcast for the last year. I haven't announced it yet, but I'm working on it. Deal. It's with a major media company um, that's going to be behind it. So it's not just going to be like Ryan's podcast from his office. It's um, going to be something much bigger. And as soon as it's solidified, you guys will be the first to know. Sick. Cool. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. I got time for, let's say, one more question. And I'm okay. going to run and try to convince this Russian to let me sell his apartment. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
What? Uh, ha- oh, actually, congratulations on the baby, by the way. I um, thanks. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of curious. How do you balance your personal life and your business? I mean, you must be really busy with a you know new addition in the family there. Yeah, that's a good question. How I balance kind of my my personal life and my work life. I think that when a lot of people ask me that question, they just sort of think that there there should be a 50-50 balance, right? Or some way, shape, or form. Or maybe like a 70-30. But people look at like a work-life balance kind of like a seesaw and they want to be on one side or the other and they don't know how to do it. So then they when they're home, they resent their home life because they're not at work. And then when they're at work, they resent their work life because they're not at home. When for me, it's really been about finding, I mean, for one, lucky enough for me, finding a great partner, right? Somebody who understands how much I like to work, and that's like an amazing priority for me. Um, and who also understands like the synergy with my business. So I try to include my home life and my work life as much as I possibly can. Like, you know, evening events and stuff like that, we try to go together. Um, I touch base a hundred times a day, right? FaceTime, like we're doing right now, is an amazing thing to do. And just doing it randomly, like at 10 a.m. Hey, what are you doing? Are you leaving the gym? Where are you? What are you at work? Like, what's going on? Like, sending little gifts. That way, you are always connected. And it's not like I go to work and I don't talk to you until 5 p.m. or I touch base with you by text once, right? That feels like you are segregating your life, which I think is pretty unhealthy. Um, and then I also I work a little bit on the weekends so that I can also maybe spend a little bit during the week um, at home. So like yesterday, I took like an hour in the middle of the day because I could and went and saw the baby, right? But this coming Saturday, I'm going to work for an extra hour in the office. That way I bring a little bit of my weekend into my week and a little bit of my week into my weekend. And then overall, it's just a much healthier lifestyle and it's worked pretty well so far. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Well, we really appreciate you... uh... Calling us, this is really crazy. Yeah, <laughs> this is fantastic. Uh, yeah, man, keep me posted. I'll let you know about the face. Uh, that's the face. I'll let you know about the podcast. And thank you for watching. Thanks for listening. Um, you guys are awesome. Thanks for doing this. Bye, Thanks. man. Thanks, yeah. man. Take right. care. Yeah. Bye.